behind me is the USCIS office in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where immigration interviews are done. As you can see the sign there, immigration interviews, USCIS, uh, for people who have filed their petitions for a green card based upon marriage and other types of applications. In this video, I want to talk to you about how you can prove that your marriage to a U.S. citizen is a real and bona fide marriage when immigration suspects that it's fraudulent and puts you in a Stokes interview. So I actually just finished a interview of uh, my clients who lived in Pennsylvania. You know, I drove all the way. My offices are in New York, but you know, I'm willing to travel to any state in New York to help my clients make sure that they get their green card. Sorry, it's a little bit noisy back here because, you know, Philly's pretty loud, um, but that's that's fine. Um, anyways, um, what I want to talk about is, you got to love Philly. Even the officers give you props here. Um, what I want to talk about today is how to prove that your marriage is real when they suspect you. So my clients, different background, different religion, you know, different almost everything, got married to each other in uh, 2021, and they filed their green card case. Um, you know, the wife is a U.S. citizen. She's born uh, in America. And, you know, he's from overseas, different religion, different language, different background, different parts of the world. And they genuinely love and care for each other. And they got married. So before I talk about how to prove that your marriage is real, let me explain the legal importance in simple words, why it's important to be able to demonstrate this because you know it's not just you get married um, immigration will not give you a green card based upon just a marriage alone until they have seen and been satisfied that you are in a bona fide marriage marriage alone is nothing you got to actually prove to them that you're in a real marriage and that has so many factors that go into it. And there's so much case law in terms of looking at different documents and affidavits and experiences and interview process, especially that goes into getting a green card case approved. So let's go back to that point about how to prove that, because now you understand it's not just a marriage alone that you got married. Um, to a citizen that you're going to be able to just get a green card. That's important, but it's not the only step that takes place. Okay, so my clients, you know, again, as I mentioned, different background, different religion, different language in many ways as well, because, you know, they speak a different language, even though, you know, she's born in America. Um, you know, they had to demonstrate to immigration that their marriage is more than just a paper marriage. It's, a, it's something that they've come together to live and they have an intention of living their life together. So when my clients walked in, you know, for the regular I-30, 45 interview, something must have happened with the immigration officer. Um, and I'll tell you in, in the end what he said to me as well. Um, he separated both of them right away. You know, it didn't say Stokes interview. This is supposed to be a regular green card interview, but something caused suspicion in him to automatically separate, you know, the green card applicant husband, put him outside and just go with the wife and ask her a whole series of questions, you know, and, and, you know, he did that for about a half an hour. I was sitting there in the room as an attorney, I can sit there and listen to both sides of the questions. And I took about six pages of notes, you know, talking about all the types of questions they asked my clients separately. So, you know, 30 minutes later, he took her outside and he brought him back inside asked her, asked him a whole bunch of questions about her, their marriage, how they met, how they lived their life together, then took him back outside, brought her back in, asked her some questions for another 15, 20 minutes, took her back outside, brought him back in, you know, asked him some questions for another 10, 15 minutes, and then, you know, brought her back in and then went over kind of the results with both of them together, you know, to make sure that they're on the same page. And I'll tell you what happened at the end. You know, this is what he said, you know, um, I wasn't, you know, he says his exact words, he's like, I wasn't sure, you know, what was going on. Uh, you know, I had some concerns, which means he doubted the validity of the marriage. But, you know, he said to my clients afterwards that, you know, I'm going to review with my supervisor. I have gotten some satisfactory answers. They're never going to tell you the immigration officers right there that your case is good. It's approved. 
you know, sometimes they will, but most of the time they will never really do that. You know, that he said he's going to run it by a supervisor and he'll let my clients know. So let, let's talk about that process right now. What happened, how it happened and so forth. And some of the questions that were raised. Um, now, I've been doing this for 12 years. You know, I'm an attorney in New York. I've been practicing immigration law. I've gone to a lot of these interviews over the years. And immigration officers have become smarter and smarter. You can't fake a marriage anymore and just expect to get a green card. You know, I take notes every single time. Um, you know, you can't type. You can't write on your phone and so forth. So I handwrite the notes and the questions they ask. And I have a compilation of all the types of questions they've asked over time. You know, so this one here is in Philly. It's my first time coming to Philly. I've done a lot of them in New Jersey, New York all the time. And, you know, the questions are very similar. This officer was actually the same religion as the applicant. You know, uh, I'm Muslim. The officer was Muslim. My green card applicant was Muslim. He asked a lot of personal questions like, okay, how did you get married? Who, how was the ceremony done? Was it a religious ceremony? You know, what was, uh, did, did, you know, how, how about your parents? Do they expect her to convert to the same religion as you? Do they expect anything from her? Uh, you know, have they accepted her? You know, because there's a religious difference, right? Religion is a big thing in people's lives. If you have a big religious difference between you and your husband or wife, you know, that's, that's something that they're going to be aware of. And that officer kept, you know, focusing on those types of questions about the religious difference. Then he also focused on, you know, communication. My, English is not my client's first language. You know, and the, the wife speaks, uh, you know, aside from English, she speaks another language. He's like, how do you interact with her family? How do you communicate with her family? Because her, her family doesn't speak that much English. You know, sorry, again, it's a little noisy. It's Philly. Um, but, you know, they, those are the types of questions they asked. And my client did a really good job. He's like, you know, I do my best. We go to family gatherings. I spend time with her for the, you know, the holidays. You know, uh, we, uh, you know, I love her and I care for her and. You know, it's not just us living together. You know, we spend a lot of time with her family. He had a whole bunch of photos that I told him to print out and come ready to show all the family events and gatherings that he's been going to, you know, and all the names of the family members. You got to know those things, you know, about somebody's family. If you're in a real marriage, you have to be able to talk about that. So, again, you know, the officer, once he saw he, that my clients are able to address issues about language, communication, um, religion, and just the mutual acceptance of each other and, and what, what's going on, you know, with, with each other's current situation in terms of where they want to go in the future and what they want to do. He became a little bit more convinced. Now, he did ask some personal questions that, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that my client was comfortable asking. And he said, you don't have to answer them. He asked him, do you plan to have children? You know, have you thought about how many children? Are you trying to have children? You know, my client's like, we're not really sure if we, we you know, we want to have children. That's okay. You don't have to have children. It's not necessary. You don't have to tell them about children and so forth and your, your future plans are. All you have to do is to be prepared to be able to talk about how your relationship is together. It doesn't matter what religion, race, language difference you have, as long as you can demonstrate that you and the other person are on the same page in terms of living your life together as husband and wife or as partners, then you should get your case approved. You know, so that's the key thing I want to emphasize to you. Thank you.